What's up, y'all? It's Zach. And it's Ade. And you know what? You're listening to Living Corporate. And you know, today, you're, and today <laughs> we have uh, listener letters. So for those who don't know, we encourage uh, at the end of every episode to send us some listener letters. You can submit them through Instagram DMs, through Twitter DMs, through our email, through our website contact us uh, section. Just hit us up, ask us things, and we will provide our perspective. We are not certified coaches. We are just... Or psychologists. Or psychologists. Or counselors. Or counselors. Let's just put all of our disclaimers out there. All of this is just from our perspectives, and we love y'all, we care about you, and we want to make sure that you succeed. However, you know, this is not a binding contract. Cool. Let's move forward. Yep, that's right. We're just two black folks out here trying to help other people of color. You know what I'm saying? That's all we're trying to do. So what's what we're going to do? We're going to read a couple of these listening letters. We'll talk about them, wax poetic, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. Ade, what else we need, what else you uh, we think we need to add to this? What else you think? Um, yeah, sit back, relax, grab a glass of water if you're listening, and uh, sip with us. Take a sip. Oh, and also, just side note, this is a thing that my, mo- my mother has been making me do recently. Drink some honey lemon ginger tea or honey ginger lemon tea or ginger lemon honey tea whatever combination works for you um to just like soothe your throat while you listen you got you got the recipe i mean i'm not gonna be responsible for my mother's recipe getting out there look on the internet so a whole bunch of different recipes okay so just google it basically so they won't be drinking your mom's recipe that just but that combination of tea Mm -hmm. will be good okay i just want to i want to make sure we love Mm -hmm. all right cool Okay, well, look, our first listener listener letter. Listener netter. Listener netter. Uh, it's a new type of listener letter. Uh, it's coming from Raquel, and the subject is... Hi, Raquel. What's going on, Raquel? Also, your phone's making noises in the background. Wasn't subject me. Subject line is... Huh? Wasn't me. Wasn't you? Was it me? Might have been me. Probably. No. Well, it probably was me. It was totally you. Yep, it was. Narrator. Mm, my bad. It was actually no, me. Hear that. <laughs> first listen letter is coming from Raquel I Raquel subject line is I need a promotion here we go hey guys end of the year performance reviews are coming up and I'm really anxious about getting promoted I've had some serious wins this year and positive feedback from my boss and I've been bringing up my desire to get promoted I'm not sure if it's enough though Performance reviews start in about six weeks. What advice would you give in my final stretch? Thanks. Hmm. You want to start or should I go? You go. Okay. First of all, Raquel, thank you for writing in. Um, This is a pretty big one. I think everyone in general is invested in the course of their careers um, and feeling as though your reviews coming up and you're not quite sure that you can advocate for yourself is a huge deal. So that said, I will give you the advice that um, my senior, the senior associate on my project gave me um, when I first started was that you write down all of your wins. Like as in the next few weeks, start taking stock of all of the things that you did really well, all of the pats on the back you got, all the shout outs, all of the wins. And then also write down all of the not so great situations, all of the sit down conversations that you had to have, all of the after action items that you had to to take down um, so that you have all of the knowledge necessary to advocate for yourself um, once it's time for those reviews. Because it's very, very easy for you to personally recall all the times you didn't do so well, um, more than the times when you... uh, you killed it like you had a a three-hour turnaround time for some huge deliverable or you owned that client meeting and all the clients left looking at you like you were the second coming of the messiah and just really take stock of all of the amazing things that you did because one it makes you more confident in these conversations because you can walk into those meetings like yeah i am that person of course that the the term i'm using here is not person but whatever um but also, it's very, very difficult for managers to miss the million, million, 
million things that you did that were amazing because they're overseeing a whole bunch of people. And so it's easy for some of your big wins to fall between the cracks. And that big win falling between the cracks can mean the difference between a $2,000 bonus and a $10,000 bonus. Maybe not that significant, but you get what I'm saying. What do you think, Zach? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, my experience in getting promoted is all about having more than just one advocate in those rooms, right? So, one, to your everything you said, 100% agree. You got to make sure that you're writing down and that if you make it easy for people to advocate for you. And the way that you do that is what you just said. So, writing down your wins, writing down your growth, like documenting those things and something that is easy to read, like a one pager or a couple of PowerPoint slides that you can quickly just send out and folks can, you know, review and, and speak to or reference. That's going to make it easy. Um, and then also, you, you know, you use the language and then you said my final stretch. It's really important. And like, again, recognizing where you are. But anytime you're thinking about getting promoted or you know that you're looking to get promoted or you're looking for a huge raise, or you're looking for you're looking to get something out of the you're looking to really progress. You want to really want to treat your entire performance. You're almost like a campaign run. Right. So like mapping it out, thinking about who are the folks that you want to connect with, who are, what are the things that you want to accomplish? And then, like we've been saying, making sure that you document those things and that you equip the people who you want to be your promoters, your ad, your advocates in those rooms and those spaces. Give them plenty of heads up. Right. So you say you have six weeks. I would like look across, think about what you've done this past year. Think about the people that you work with and say, hey. I'm looking to get promoted this year. This is my goal. Like, and like, don't be afraid. Like, right. Like you're, it's, it's a goal and ask, would you be willing to support me? If so, if they say yes, or depending on how you want to frame it, if so, would you please review this here? Or would you please, would you be willing to write something for me? Right. So every company has something different. Um, some companies have kind of like in time reviews. Other people have like informal kind of like write-ups and positive notes other people like there's various things right that you can um there are various ways you can document but it's about gathering those those points of evidence and then that way when it's time for your review and, the, and people are looking for your you're basically building a case for yourself there's a variety of things people can pull from that's really important so like you say you have six weeks i would really like kind of put your nose to the grindstone reach out to the people that you know that you've had a positive impact on have a conversation with them make it easy for them to advocate for you. And then um, again, kind of depending on who it is, if you know who's going to be the person who's going to like explicitly going to be talking about, hey, this was person should get promoted, have a conversation with them as well. Let them know what you're doing. Give them all of that evidence and then make sure that y'all have a conversation about what it looks like for you to be properly spoken about and advocated for. That's not to say that this, this process is easy. Um, Especially Raquel, if you are a feminine center, it's not you're not often taught how to advocate for yourself um, and how to really push for what you want. Um, it's something that I'm personally learning how to do, and I think that there's no better place to do that than at work because it's work. So yes, it it bleeds into the rest of your life and et cetera, et cetera. But it's really just a microcosm of the greater world around you. And what it means to advocate at work is also what it means to advocate for yourself in your personal lives, in your friendships, um, in your relationships. And so treat this as a proving ground for it's not it's not just about work here. Right. I would treat this as, OK, if I'm able to really push for what I want here, whether or not I get it. And yes, you will, girl. Um whether or not I get it, I know that I've had the experience of what it means to advocate for myself, period, regardless of where I go. So once you get this one out of the way, every successive conversation that you have that might be difficult, that might feel uncomfortable, cannot possibly be more difficult than the very first one. So either way, we got your back. Thank you for writing in. You're... Did you have anything else you wanted to say, Zach, before I got this entire conversation nope. off? I, I realized that that's what I did. My bad. No, it's good. I, I mean, I, I feel like my, my contribution was uh, the Europe. I'm good. <laughs> <Can't stand> you. <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, 
Definitely, yes. So, so all Godspeed to Raquel. I'm definitely excited for you. Hopefully, you can give us an update. Let us know how it goes. Right. Drinks on you next time around. Drinks on you next time because you balling. Maybe one day, you know what I'm saying? We can all work together. Balling, you know what I'm saying? When you st- right, right, right. So, cool, cool, cool. Uh, we have another one here. Yeah. How do you want to take this one? Most definitely. All right. So, this one, the subject says, get me out of here. Uh, in caps. So, I really had to <laughs> give it the respect that it was due. <clears throat> so, Xavier writes in saying, hey, y'all. I'm so close to just walking out of work and never coming back. It's not even funny. Oh, my. I seriously need a mental health break. Just go on a trip and never come. (laughs) JK. He really said that. JK. I come back. My problem is that even though we have unlimited PTO, put this in scare quotes, at work, it feels like we're discouraged from taking PTO. Hmm. My coworker went on a trip a few months back. And she's had to deal with jokes about her work ethic. What? She's been made to feel to work really hectic schedules and just overall painted like less of a team player. I don't want to deal with this. And while I love my job, I can't keep living like this. Please help. Frustrated and, and about to burn out. Xavier. Ow. Um, oh, man, Xavier. You want to get started with this one, Zach? X. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Professor uh, X. X. Ah, X. <laughs> no, I mean, I've definitely been there. Um, and I feel like I, I sadly, like, I'm closer to being there than other places. So this really resonates with me. Um, it's tough when you don't feel like you can, you can take off work, right? Um, but at the same time, I mean, when you start getting to the point where it's like, man, I'm about to quit or man, I just got to get up. I got to get up out of here. Then I think that's when it comes to making sure that you have like really transparent conversations, right? With your boss. Like, Hey, I recognize when a really busy time, I recognize what's going on. I am, I am, I'm burnt out. I am exhausted. I am just be honest, right? There's ways to, there's ways to phrase it in a way that did not come across like you're whining or that you're, um, being, fragile or dramatic and these are insecurities that I deal with all the time it's like I'm, I'm always trying not to be the diva and I'll say that I'll be like I'm not trying to be a diva I apologize for bringing this up like there have been things that I've had to raise at work in my career that were perfectly right to raise but I don't like being the center of that attention right um, but you got to think about this Xavier he's saying he's saying that um He's about to, he's like thinking about not coming back. And he says JK, but I mean, like, he's not really, he's not really kidding. Like he wrote this, right? Like he took the time and wrote it and sent it, sent it. So there's a certain level of seriousness to this. So I would say, have a conversation with your boss. Be transparent about where you're, why you're feeling this way. And then move forward and take the time off, right? If your job provides you a limited PTO, and you have a, and you're you're about to burn out, um, then take it. I think the only thing is, is that make sure that whatever work that you need to get done or, or won't that you won't be tackling during that time is that you make sure that you're working with your boss, with your team, mm. with whoever, to make sure that those those things are covered. Mm. Right, that's the challenge. So like with your coworker who they're saying that you know the people question the work ethic and everything, it's like some of that is cultural. Like that might just be like just the culture of that space, but also if you're really uh, proactive and you say, Hey, look for the next three days, I'm going to be off. Cause I need to, I need to recharge. I'm, um, and these are the things that are going to be happening over these, in these three days. And again, like not, I would not give them a day heads up. I would tell them like, you know, a couple weeks in advance and say, Hey, look, these are the tasks can who like, and then make it very simple. Like, Hey, these are the things that need to get done. This is the way that you're gonna have to get these things done. And that way people can just kind of take it, drive it. And then, close it that way when you come back you're not staring down the barrel of a bunch of work that didn't get done your team isn't having to kind of pick up the isn't having to like deal with the the impacts of stuff you know just the dependence the dependencies and anything like that that you things that they were depending on you for um you're able just to you're able to kind of like have a clean transition but if you do that and you're transparent with your with your supervisor Hey, man, you got to take the time off. Take care of yourself. Ade, what do you think? Agreed. Um, 
I think my very first point was that succession plan that you were talking about earlier. Um, creating just an Excel spreadsheet and listing the discrete tasks that are yours that you own um, and who is equipped on your team to deal with them. And then having a come to Jesus moment, come to Jesus moment with your with your boss, because I think it is a sign of poor management um, that you would even have to justify you leaving and taking a, a, a mental health break. Um, the reason I say that is because if you're experiencing this like heavy workload and this hectic schedule and you're feeling like you're about to burn out, then somebody has noticed. Somebody has noticed. I, I can say from my own personal experience, like when it's incredibly hectic at work, my director comes up and it's like, all right, we're taking everybody. Stop what you're doing. We're going for a coffee coffee break. And we're just going to walk and go outside and experience the sunshine on our faces. Um, or my lead goes, okay, everyone has to leave at 6 p.m. tonight. Nobody needs to be in this building. Like they're being proactive about caring for you as a person as much as they care for you um, as a coworker or as a resource at work. Because everybody knows that you are less valuable to them um, as an institution um, if you're honestly not on top of your game. And there's no way they can be on top of your game when you are a ball of nerves and anxiety. That's one. Two, I am genuinely concerned actually about your coworker having to deal with being taught, being treated poorly. So it's one thing to leave your team in the lurch and, you know, not have adequate support for all of the, your all of the items in your in your work stream or um, your coworkers feeling like you left them um, holding the bag on several items. But this sounds like she was just punished for, and it might just be your own current perspective based all off of how you're feeling currently. But it sounds like she's being punished for having the audacity to leave, to like just go and take a mental health break. And I would look into, I know you say you, you love your job, but I would look into alternate employment simply because <laughs> I am so serious. No. I am so serious. I know you're not joking. Um, because the same way that they find it comfortable to alienate someone just for doing what they say to do. Like a lot of these companies will go, yeah, we absolutely, we give you unlimited PTO because we care about you and we want to make sure that you're okay and you, you are, your life continues just because yada, 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 yada. Okay, whatever. But if the truth of the matter is that when you do in fact take this time off and when you do in fact take advantage of all of the perks associated with your job um you get treated a type of way for it that doesn't sit well with me personally um it feels like you're being set up um and again this might not be the truth of the matter i'm just reading inferring from um, what i see here but it does feel like or it does sound like um there is no winning that you are either going to be working your butt off until you have like it's since your breakdown or you take breaks when and for however long you need them and you're punished for it and that just in general doesn't sit well with me personally that seems like a bad practice um it seems retaliatory that you would take a break and then be given all of these hectic schedules um on, upon your arrival so yeah, I think in general, I advocate that you come up to your boss with full honesty, like Zach said, um, and a succession plan. And by succession plan, I mean literally take every single thing that you do over the course of a week and list them. Um, and also list the people who are able to take on those tasks. Because uh, you generally, I don't know about everywhere else, but I know that I don't work in a complete silo. Um, so that if I ever have to take a break from work, there are people who know and understand enough of what I do. They're able to take to pick up the slack in my absence. 
Um, and it's just for those of you out there who own your own companies or are senior management in companies, it is such a toxic work culture to create, to say that people aren't able to take breaks when they need to, um, that people are punished for just living their lives, that people's lives don't start and end at work. And it's unfair and it's toxic and it's abusive to decide that your employee's whole world should revolve around work. And when it doesn't, you punish them for it. That's jacked up. No, I agree. And I was laughing about you saying, you know, I would really, you know, advise you to uh, seek somewhere else to work. Because it kind of reminds me of the read where people be like, dump him. Absolutely. They dump him is like the main thing they'll say. But also, if you've ever, if you notice, like people who write into the read, and this is a, a, a complete sidebar, but I've felt this on my spirit for a while. People who write into the read or the relationship subreddit um, generally are like at the end of their rope. Right. People don't just go seek advice from strangers. For funsies, they're like, okay, I really can't talk to anybody else in my life about this. I need some kind of help. And it's usually just like a wild situation. And everybody needs to like scream at them. Please leave. Please. No, that's 100%. You're not wrong. It's just funny. Um, and you, but ultimately, because of the capitalist society that we live in, right? Like life is becoming increasingly about work. There's a an unspoken but ever increasing expectation that you're just gonna work. And work and work and work and work and work. Your mental, physical, emotional, spiritual wellness be down, right? Right. And you're um, you are validated only through your work. And um I'm here to tell you that that is not it, friends. That's not the truth of the matter. It doesn't have to be the truth of the matter. Please take breaks. Yeah, no, no doubt. So uh Xavier, definitely hope that this helps um pray that you um don't burn yourself out give yourself the the break and it's crazy because it's really interesting rather is if you don't give yourself the break your body will 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 give itself a break eventually right yeah. like you'll pass out you'll get sick and like you know that vacation like you'll get a different type of vacation mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. make sure you just make sure you there take are care no of yourself beaches and hospital beds i'll tell you that right now <laughs> that's true <laughs> oh goodness okay um well cool so so we have you know we have a few we try to we try to do two or three listening letters you know and per each of these episodes uh, we're not trying to inundate y'all but we do have more um so we'll be back with more listener letters and another episode. Yep. And thank you to everyone who wrote in. Uh, we hope this helped. Again, please seek out the advice or, or help of people who are even more professionaler than we are. Yes, professionaler. Look. Who are better who are better than who us. Who are better at us than this, who are able to physically be there for you in a way that we might not be able to um we love y'all stay safe stay lifted um you have any anything else you want to add zach do you have like a favorite things i know i sprung this one on you but (laughs) you sprung it on me a few weeks ago so no 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 fair enough um so my favorite thing this week i do have a favorite thing so that's going to be crazy socks. So crazy socks are, and when I say crazy socks, I really just mean like socks with unique designs. So socks with unique designs, like they, they've been kind of like in style. Like they've been, that's, they've been normalized now, but I still really enjoy them. So I, I I'm not going to say the website I procure my socks from, but I've been really excited because I recently just got some socks. They're like pink with like little black and white um, puppy dogs on them. Yeah. That sounds really cute, actually. I was going to make fun of you, it, it, but... Oh, look at you. I mean, I'm still going to make fun even. of you. So, no, I love... But they still sound cute. Okay, well, I appreciate it. I respect that. Uh, <laughs> so, and then I got I got some, like, lime green ones with, like, um, some red T-Rexes on them, but they're, like, cartoony kind of T-Rexes. So, I love socks. I think it's an easy way 
to show a little bit of style. Um, people laugh. So I'm a, on my current project. People laugh because, like, I'm the only person on the project that wears a blazer. But like, from a style, from a style perspective, I think blazers are cool. Uh, and so I, I'm gonna rock a blazer, like no doubt. And so, and I also have like a little pocket square. And then I have my crazy socks. And it's not like I'm wearing like high. What's the word? High waters. I'm not flooding. So it's not you gonna just see my socks, but like. If people go, hey, like, what's the drip looking like? I'm gonna be like, hey, yo, I pull up the, I pull up the pant leg one time, and let yeah. you know, like, <laughs> it's dripping. Drip I'm dripping. Looking like <laughs> when my boss, if my boss ever walks up and he says, hey, Zach, what's the drip looking like? I'll Why be like, oh, oh. in the world? See, <laughs> no one ever, no one ever in my job would ever say, what's the drip? Yeah, I just, like? no I one. need anybody from Zach's job. If y'all are listening to this i encourage y'all to write in and please tell me the accuracy of this man's statements no not one, because no i think no this man is, is lying but like i just want a first-hand account of no one his dad jokes at that. work some people some people definitely but I, but i have taught my i have taught my my supervisor the concept of drip on that it's note funny, like, we're gonna roll out of here that's <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be that's gonna be it for us on today Oh, you're not going you don't have a favorite thing? <laughs> What's your favorite thing? <laughs> so, my favorite thing currently is Victory Lap by Nipsey Hustle. If you've heard of <laughs> um, Nipsey Hustle, or if you haven't, um, Nipsey Hustle was um, a rapper mm. and an entrepreneur. Mm. Um, mm-hmm who was murdered recently and um because it, it it was essentially his final project i don't know if there are any um anything that's in his vault that his family will eventually decide to release um it really was um a spectacular album it was nominated for a grammy of the year i think if i recall correctly if not then whoops my bad um but yeah my favorite thing I haven't been able to stop listening to it um and I encourage you all if you are a fan of of rap of hip hop of storytelling in general even if it's not a medium that you've ever enjoyed it's a worthwhile album to listen to just because it's um it's such an incredible story that's it that's all I got that's dope well uh cool I guess we're gonna get up on out of here thank y'all for listening to the living corporate podcast yeah thanks for listening make sure you follow us on instagram at living corporate yeah. or twitter at living corporate underscore pod i just already talked to you about submitting listening letters but i'm just gonna say it one more time if you want to submit a listening letter make sure you get at us at instagram dms twitter dms our email living corporate podcast at gmail.com we're also on al Gore's internet at living hyphen corporate.com because Australia refuses to let us be great. That's true. But we're also at livingcorporate.co with no dash. We own all the domains, really, except for livingcorporate.com. We have livingcorporate.net.org. Uh, you know what I'm We have them all. We just don't have livingcorporate.com. Which is wild. But yeah, which is wild. Which is wild. We have everything else but that. Uh, anyway... Appreciate y'all. We'll talk to you all soon. This has been Zach. And this has been Ade. Peace. Peace. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin from Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.